Ladies and gentlemen of the Batverse, it looks like things just got pretty damn interesting. So James Gunn has responded to people on the threads, and as you guys know, we cover the tidbits he gives us on the DCU there, but this time round, he dropped pretty big bombshells for those of us who are big fans of Matt Reeves's The Batverse and how Matt Reeves will be involved in the DCU moving forward and how his Arkham Asylum spin-off show is now set within James Gunn's DCU itself. And James Gunn even replied to me when I was looking into this. So guys, we need to break this down because at first it was pretty confusing to me, but what I'm gonna do is run through the whole timeline to make it add up as best as I can to the way things have got to where they are now. And then afterwards, I'll give my take on how I personally feel about the Arkham show being in the DCU, what I think this means about you know Matt Reeves being involved and producing on future DCU projects and everything like that. We've got tons to talk about, but go ahead and like this video if you do go on to enjoy it. I'm dying to hear your thoughts down in the comments below as well. So let's start right from the top. It all started when we had this user asking James Gunn, Sir, could you please tell me if Matt is producing another Batverse project other than the Batman 2, Penguin, and Arkham? And this is where James Gunn replied, Right now, Matt is producing Arkham as a DCU series. So there's just the two for now. So the latter being the just two for now is the Batman 2 and Penguin within his Matt Reeves Batverse. And Arkham as a DCU series. So people were like, wait, what? Including me? I was just chilling in the lounge, doing my usual evening thing or <laughs> whatever. And then I saw this on my Twitter app and I was, or X, X. Uh, and I was like... Beret, like they were, what, 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 what is going on? So then, naturally, uh, this user asks here, sorry, is, is the Arkham show set in the DCU? And Gunn replied, yes, we love Matt as a director and producer, so he'll be producing stories both within his The Batman universe and within the DCU, which, by the way, the latter of that I think is awesome. Again, I'll get into my extended thoughts about Matt Reeves being involved in the DCU and what this could even mean for the future DCU Batman. Now, yes, this is where things got pretty confusing if you were there when this was first breaking, if you will, because as you should all know, we knew that the Arkham series, at least originally, was discussed as being a part of Matt Reeves's Batverse. And there's quite a few times of when Matt Reeves has teased this. I mean, you guys know me, I've got a lot of quotes in my head and stored on my computer I and I kind of know them off by heart now kind of like somebody citing a verse out the freaking bible but one of these examples being just to make it very very clear as Matt Reeves said we've actually now moved more into the realm of exactly what would happen in the world of Arkham as it relates coming off of our movie and some of the characters and their origins, almost leaning into the idea of it's like a horror movie or a haunted house that is Arkham. Again, to emphasize, because I'm seeing some people out there completely deny the foundations that of the Arkham show being in the Batverse, to emphasize here what would happen in the world of Arkham as it relates coming off of our movie movie. And he meant the Batman. This was said in an interview, I believe, conducted by the Cybernerds with Matt Reeves um, for press for the Batman itself. And this was said in March. So there shouldn't really be any debate there that when he says coming off of our movie that the Arkham show, at least in its very early stages of the idea, at least when it was being conceptualized, was thought of as a Batverse spin-off. I know some people like Bobby keep saying the same thing. I just need to make it very crystal clear because it's quite important, obviously, as I go through how the heck we've ended up where we ended up today with the Arkham show. So naturally, this is where I popped on threads, which, you know, I, I don't use that much, but I know this is where Gunn uh, replies to a lot of people. He's kind of ditched Twitter replying for the most part, but he still replies to people on Instagram's threads. So I then replied saying, why is it? And I think reasonably so from what, you know, I just read out. Why is it that it changed from a Batman Universe spinoff to a DCU project? So I was genuinely asking, right? Like, why is it changed? And then Gunn replied to me saying it wasn't changed. So this is when I was just like, what? Like, it wasn't changed? Are you trying to tell me from the very get-go of Arkham being talked about, it was a DCU project, which just didn't really add up. But 
it does kind of all make sense now after having looked into it more. So this is where, as you can imagine, everyone was even more confused with James Gunn's reply to me because everyone's initial thoughts, mine included here, was, as you can imagine, how didn't it change considering Matt Reeves said comments about it being in the Batman universe way back in March of 2022, which was way before Gunn and Safran were named as heads of DC Studios at the end of October. So therefore, how could it have possibly been a DCU project um, way before the DCU was even conceptualized. Again, Matt Reeves was saying this stuff way back in March. Gun came in at the end of October. Uh, Gods and Monsters was then planned over those months to January. And then on January 31st, we obviously had Gods and Monsters and 10 projects within that first chapter revealed to us in that YouTube video. So now we're at the part where everyone was like asking Gun for a bit more clarity with why he responded, it, it wasn't changed. So this is when this user asked him, so this has always been planned to be in the DCU from the start. And that's when James Gunn replied, Yes, it was one of the first pitches we bought when Peter and I came on board. And this is most important to what he says next. Uh, I don't know the permutations it went through before that time. So this was exactly the clarity we needed amongst that initial reply and confusion. He is quite literally saying it was one of the first pitches, pitches for like a show that he bought when him and Peter came on board as co-heads of DC Studios. And he's not aware of what previous iterations slash permutations it went through. Uh, and this is when this other user asked on Instagram, please give us more clarity on the Arkham series. Again, like people across the board were pretty confused as you can imagine. Gunn then responded to that user on Instagram saying, I don't know what clarity you guys want. It's set in the DCU. It's been that way since Peter and I picked up the pitch shortly after we first came to DC. We don't have a script yet. So essentially on the bottom line, if you're still not really understanding the situation, believe it or not, now, as of when Gunn said these two things, it really does make a lot more sense. And let me explain why. The first thing that needs to be acknowledged is what I briefly went over earlier. And I need to stress this. When those comments in that interview were made by Reeves, it was March of 2022. And as we know, that's the release month and year of the Batman movie. So yes, even though it was initially thought of as a Batverse spinoff, it was very early in the stages of development back then. So with the DCU and also with Gunn saying it's been that way since Peter and I picked up the pitch shortly after we first came to DC, it seems as though that Matt Reeves himself likely even pitched the show to James Gunn as a DCU series. And this does add up quite a bit. It's just the reason why obviously it was confusing uh, when we first heard this yesterday is because even though there was really little to no updates on the Arkham series, the last we heard of it was that it was a, a Batverse series and it had kind of gone through a couple of different evolutions. But now with Gunn saying all of this, the reason why this adds up even more is because when James Gunn and Peter Safran were announced to be, you know, heads of DC Studios, he said himself, if you guys roughly remember, that Matt Reeves was one of the first people he called. And then a couple of months later after that, they even met up in person. Now this may start to sound a little bit familiar to you guys. And before that actual meeting, Matt Reeves even said himself, we're actually supposed to meet in the next few weeks because they want to talk to me about the broad plan. And then they want to hear the Batverse plan. We're just getting together to talk about all of that. Look, I'm excited to hear what they're going to do. The Batverse thing, as James has said, and as Peter has said, and I like how Matt Reeves is very clearly saying this, is kind of its own thing they are letting us do. That's part of what I'm going to be talking to them about in a few weeks. They're going to be talking to me about what they're doing in their 10 year plan, or certainly what's in the near future as well, so that we can understand that we're not, it's air traffic control. We, we don't want to be crashing into each other. We want to support each other. I'm super excited. I'm really excited to hear about what they're doing and to be working with them. It's going to be cool. So yeah, you guys should remember that was said back in January. This was before for the Gods and Monsters reveal, like days before really. But the reason why I'm talking about this meeting in January is because it does line up with what Gunn said about the Arkham show being one of the first pitches that they bought when they came in as co-heads of DC Studios. So in this meeting in January, which again, don't forget that James Gunn and Peter Safran got hired at 
I think October 25th, right at the end of October, they were then basically locking themselves away, crafting the eight to 10 year plan. Only a couple of months goes by, January, boom, before the Gods and Monsters YouTube announcement video, they have a couple of meetings and well, they call all kinds of people as we know, but Matt Reeves was one of them they actually met with. And believe it or not, there's more information about this very meeting from none other than James Gunn himself, after the meeting had taken place and where he spoke to Collider about having met with Matt Reeves and when being asked if the Batman trilogy was still moving forward because this for some reason this was still a question um, he said yes it is Matt is working on the Batman part two which he thinks of as a Batman crime saga which also includes the Penguin series and it's its own thing. He's hard at work on that. And what I'm about to read out next is very key to this whole timeline as this is after the meeting he had with Matt Reeves. He came in and pitched us some amazing, really cool stuff the other day. So our plan is for that to continue. The Batman is not a stepchild, it's all under DC. We are fully invested in the success of the Batman just like we are everything else. And by the latter, they're just saying they're like, like you know, we're not getting rid of the Batman, Matt's still working on that. Either way here, the, the takeaway from uh, Peter Safran and James Gunn's comment to Collider here is that it was after the meeting and they acknowledged that Matt Reeves came in and pitched them some amazing, really cool stuff. So that meant probably the pitch for the Batman 2, even though the script wasn't done at the time, as James Gunn recently also said on the threads, he also acknowledged recently on threads that he did indeed hear a pitch. But also in this meeting, it would make sense as per what Gunn has said that other things would have been pitched as well, which is where this somewhat third evolution, third evolution of the Arkham series uh, took place to be pitched for the DCU. And you may be like, what do you mean third evolution? Well, yeah, believe it or not, the Arkham show has kind of gone through like a Charmander to Charmeleon to freaking Charizard thing over the long course of its creative... I don't know, freaking roadmap, if you will. And that is because Matt Reeves has said before that the GCPD show somewhat evolved into that Arkham show. He said that in that same interview, and I think he said it a couple of different times as well. This was due to Terrence Winter leaving the Gotham PD slash GCPD show due to creative differences. They then brought Joe Barton on board, but then that didn't work out, and then he was no longer writing it. And then apparently it evolved into the Arkham show, as Matt Reeves detailed, which which is when we got another writer in, Antonio Campos, I believe, which uh, I believe you're seeing on screen now, the new story of that, on October 25th, which was funnily enough the same date that James Gunn and Peter Safran came in, but this was still before the meeting that Matt Reeves had. So they were still trying to figure out what the heck this Arkham thing was, but I guess somewhere along the way, after trying to conceptualize the Batverse Arkham show, they realized that it would be a better fit for the DCU. So now it's technically on that third episode evolution that I'm somewhat speaking about here. So what I will say is that it technically did change, but when Reeves was talking about the Arkham show being a Batverse thing, it was just an idea that hadn't been fully brought to fruition at that time. Like, things do change in that conceptualized stage, especially when it's very early on. Matt Reeves, in the quotes that we're all referring to, was talking about this in interview comments for the Batman movie. This was an idea. It wasn't in full development. They were trying to figure it out. So what I'm just trying to say there is that it's not literally outside of this planet to imagine where it's got to now. And most importantly here, by the time it got to James Gunn in that meeting in January between himself and Matt Reeves and Peter Safran, as he says, I don't know the permutations it went through before that. So to him, it hasn't really been anything else other than a DCU show by the time it came to his front door. So to be fair to Gunn there, as per what he's saying, because one thing I am seeing that came out of this whole situation when it was first quite confusing before Gunn clarified is that people were saying, James Gunn is a liar, he's stolen uh, the Arkham show and put it into his DCU. No, believe it or not, I mean, if, if you've paid attention to everything that I've just gone through, it kind of makes sense uh, where we're at. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be a huge fan of it. Um, I'm about to get into my mixed feelings about this news, but everything I've gone through, and you guys know I like to really present as much as I can, this does make sense, especially when you take into account the long story short situation and that it did, yes, indeed, have Batverse foundations, but along the way, as the idea developed beyond the concept stage, and I have to remind everyone, we didn't hear about this Arkham show in firm updates 
for months upon months. I mean, for a long, 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 long time. So when we hear about it now, yes, it may be a little bit confusing, but behind the scenes of that early concept stage, it eventually got pitched as a DCU series and Gunn never really knew anything different about it. Of which is a little bit surprising to me when he says he didn't or doesn't know of any previous permutations this Arkham show had. You would have thought in that meeting, Matt Reeves would have said something like in this pitch. So we've been trying to, you know, get this Arkham series off the ground. Initially it was a GCPD series, but after Terrence Winter left, we had a guy called Joe Barton trying to work on it. But then we thought, you know what? It's evolved more into what, you know, the Arkham space would be like as it relates coming off of our movie. But then we couldn't really make that work. But hey, Jim, James, Peter, uh, since we're talking about your DCU, my Batverse, you know, I think it could actually work better as a DCU Arkham show. So, like, it, all I'm saying there is that it's surprising that Matt Reeves wouldn't have mentioned to James Gunn that it was an idea initially conceived to be in the Batverse. But James Gunn is saying that he has no idea of any previous permutations slash iterations of this project. And if he did, then he would have known that, yeah, it, its foundation was indeed Batverse. Anyway though, also something to bear in mind is this isn't technically the first non-Batverse related Batman project that Reeves will be producing because he's also working on the animated Batman Caped Crusader series. And I mentioned that little tidbit in there because some people are like, wait, Matt Reeves is now gonna, you know, not only obviously work on his Batverse projects, but he's gonna now be producing and working on DCU projects. It's not crazy to think because he's also working on Cape Crusader that he will now also be involved in the DCU and that's an exciting thing I'm about to get into. But now I've just got my ramble out the way of the timeline of what was the foundations of the Batverse Arkham series to now the DCU Arkham series. How do I feel personally about what I've thought to be this whole time as a Batverse project, this Arkham series, now being a DCU, like it's this Arkham series is now in the DCU. So this is DCU Batman Arkham, which is crazy. I do indeed have mixed feelings. I, I think that's not hard to comprehend, right? Because I'm a big fan of Matt Reeves' Batverse. I liked the idea of the spin-off projects that he's announced um, up until now. It, it had a lot of potential. They're doing a Penguin spin-off. They could have got into the history of Arkham. We didn't know exactly when this Batverse version of Arkham would release, but I've always wondered if after the Batman Part 2, similar to how the Penguin series is bridging the first movie to the second movie, I always thought, how cool would it be? be if the Arkham series releases after the Batman part two and it bridges us to the Batman part three as the final movie in the trilogy and whatever happens in that storyline of the Arkham show it could set up the third movie maybe it was that Gotham loves a comeback story with regards to Barry Keoghan's Joker teasing that to the Riddler and maybe they escape and it could possibly even set those two characters up to be villains or a couple of villains included in that third and final movie so yeah you know that I had that prospect in my head the whole time Time, and it does feel a bit almost melancholy-esque to me that like uh, oh you know oh it's no longer a it's no longer a, a batverse show but having said that ladies and gentlemen i can't deny that i do think it's still really cool that this show exists but in the dcu and this will surround the arkham of the gotham city in the dc universe that james gunn and peter saffron are building it obviously is literally the dcu batman's arkham so what could this mean uh with what this show could introduce to us that that's also a crazy prospect so you know i i do see the silver lining of that you know i'm still a batman fan i'm still very much so excited for the future dcu batman and you guys know me as much as i love matt reeves as the batman i've also acknowledged how exciting it is that we're also going to get a Batman in a fantastical DCU world and where they really just won't hold back at all because after all when you have a Batman in a fantastical DC world, you're also going to have a Batman with fantastical rogues gallery villains, uh, one who won't hold back on, you know, bat tech, bat gear, uh, Robins, everything. This is this Batman's at least in year 10 to 12 of his Batman career, assuming he started at around 25 to 26. So you get my point there, that, that they could go off the rails with this, whereas, for example, Matt Reeves' version of the Arkham show, or when we, or if we do get a Clayface in his world, it would be a gold 
golden age version. It wouldn't necessarily be the big blob monster, but the DCU can do the big blob monster clay face. So you get what I'm saying there. Honestly, with regards to this part specifically, I don't know what more to say because I imagine many of you may feel how I feel. You know, I I'm kind of sad about it. I would have loved to have seen it. Who knows what Matt Reeves's, you know, mind was thinking with regards to his early comments about it being a Batverse project. Where would it have truly gone there? But it is what it is now. And if anything, I'm fascinated as per what James Gunn is saying here, it was pitched to them. So this must mean, from what I can assume, Matt Reeves himself pitched it. Because after all, I read out to you guys the timeline of the meetings, Matt Reeves talking about the meeting beforehand, James Gunn talking about the meeting, post-meeting saying that he pitched some things. Obviously, one of those would have been the Batman part two, but also we have to assume it was the Arkham series. And I think we do have to deduce out of this that after how many, as I, as I kept saying, evolutions that this show has gone through from the very, very foundations being the GCPD show and Matt Reeves' words himself saying it's now more evolved into the Arkham show. Well, it did have that third evolution uh, into the DCU Arkham version. And I would love to know, and hopefully somebody does ask this in the future to Matt Reeves, like why couldn't it work out as a Batverse Arkham show. Maybe it is just as simple as he kept trying to figure it out from the GCPD version of the show to the Arkham version of the show, and then just realized that maybe there is kind of maybe, and this will be interesting to get your guys' thoughts on, more potential with it being a DCU Arkham show, because the thing about Robert Pattinson's Batman, all while, and this isn't me negating how it could have been really cool as a Batverse project, but the Batverse Batman, Robert Pattinson, only has so many rogues gallery out there there, or at least they're all in their infancy. You guys don't really need me to explain this with how Joker, as Matt Reeves has said, hasn't even called himself the Joker. He's only at the very infancy of his career, granted that he got put away during Pattinson's Batman Year One after going on a little bit of a serial killing spree. Riddler only just started in Year One during the movie. So compare what possible villains or rogues gallery Robert Pattinson's Batman could have been up against up until the Arkham show would have been a thing in the Batverse. Compare that to the DCU Batman, who is likely at year 10 of Batman or year 12, and there could be a lot more to play with there. Like, truly. I think that's quite an easy comparison to understand with how, I think, at least with the DCU, maybe Matt Reeves, James Gunn, everyone collectively in that meeting agreed that potentially it has more promise being a DCU Arkham show for their DCU Batman, which now brings me to the DCU Batman. The question is, will this show or is this show aiming to come out before the Batman, the Brave and the Bold movie to kind of maybe as what you can probably imagine where I'm going with this to set up the mood for this Batman. If we're already visiting the Arkham space, of which the DCU Batman will be very familiar with Arkham after having at least locked up several rogues gallery there in his first 10 years in the DCU. Are they going to try and cook up to the Batman in the way that, from what we can at least assume right now, Paradise Lost could be doing that with Wonder Woman? Now, let me kind of rephrase that. Paradise Lost is set well before the birth of Wonder Woman, but all I mean by that is it's still set on Damascara. We're still learning about the DCU's version of the Amazons, so, you know, could it be a similar thing for the DCU Batman where we kind of learn more about the Christmas tree decorations before seeing the tree itself? One of my weird Boba analogies, but hopefully, hopefully that kind of made some sense. But my speculation could be wrong there as well. We could get the Brave and the Bold first, and then the Arkham series might not release for like five to six years from now. Now. And then, you know, after seeing Batman uh, and Damian Wayne in the Brave and the Bold DCU movie, then we, we see this uh, separate Arkham project. Like, who knows? But either way, Gunn heard the pitch and it was one of the first things they bought when they came in as co-heads. They loved it that much. And the cool thing about this is that, as he said, not only is Matt Reeves cooking in his own Batverse with part two and eventually part three, got the Penguin series, but he will be producing on DCU projects, obviously Arkham. But what I take out of that is that if you wanted Matt Reeves' touch not only being maintained on his Batverse, cool. We've still got that. We very much so know from James Gunn and Matt Reeves that they're letting them do their thing. Nothing's going to happen with that. That's been said time and time again. But if you also wanted Matt Reeves' touch on Batman 
but in the DCU and maybe offering his somewhat Batman expertise on the fantastical version, then you also get that as well. And I really, really, really love that idea. And I have to think, if Matt Reeves is going to be producing this Arkham series in the DCU and as acknowledged by James Gunn, other projects in the DCU, there's no way that I, I can't not now think that he won't be involved in some way, shape or form in some capacity with the DCU Batman. He has to be to some extent. Now we do know that Andy Muschietti is directing the Brave and the Bold movie, but now I'm thinking Matt Reeves might be heavily involved in the producing aspect of what that film will turn out to be. We still don't truly know the writer right now. There is a rumor out there for the writer, but I think you can now probably look at Matt Reeves as quite the consultant on the way Batman should be executed in the DCU. Now, don't worry to people who are like, oh, but I really want a fantastical Batman. You're still going to get that in the DCU. Just because Matt Reeves is now going to be somewhat likely involved with the DCU Batman, doesn't mean he's going to make it grounded, if you will, like his Robert Pattinson Batman. He's just going to bring his, and I think we all really like on this channel, Matt Reeves' touch on Batman. He's going to bring that same touch, but I wonder what Reeves' touch will look like through the fantastical lens. So we're also likely going to be getting that as well. I say likely because I can't really confirm it, but if if James Gunn is saying, okay, well, you know, he's producing the Arkham series and future DC projects as well as his own Batverse, I have to think he's going to be putting his fingers in, in a little packet of DC Batman as well. It, it's got to be. And, and James Gunn, must be wise to that because he's like, well, look how well he's doing with the the Batman series. We need him over here with our DCU Batman if you're interested, Matt. And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do a couple of things. Hey, how about this Arkham show? We've been trying to get off the ground for a while, but actually I think I could... Uh, see it in the DCU and I would like to be involved with that if uh, you're going to take it over there and Gunn's like Okay, okay, you carry on cooking over there in your universe But also we'll, we'll play with Batman in the DCU over here and his Arkham Also another thought coming out of this is that I'm not saying Barry Keoghan's Joker will be a main villain in part two or part three I, I can't possibly know that but one of the biggest fan speculations as I uh, briefly detailed earlier is that maybe the Arkham show in the Batverse could have come out after part two. Maybe that would have facilitated some kind of escape as per what the Joker teased with his comeback story at the end of the Batman part one. So with the Arkham show not being a Batverse project, does this mean as with Barry Keoghan's recent tease that basically he is coming back as the Joker in part two? I wonder if maybe again, major speculation here, will his role be more prominent in the second movie? Now, I'm not saying it would be huge because let's just assume the second movie has a completely different rogues gallery villain, but what I am saying is maybe they might borrow what maybe they were going to do with Joker in the Arkham series and put that towards the end of the second film. I, I, I don't know. That's just something else to consider. Will bottom line Barry Keoghan's Joker role be stepped up a little bit more in the mainline movies earlier on their timeline than maybe what they thought they were going to do. Overall, at the end of the day, after all my ramblings, in conclusion, my take is now, um, it is what it is. Like, the, the Arkham show is factually a DCU show now. I do mourn the idea of what maybe once upon a time was going to be a Batverse Arkham series because, I mean, we're all big Reeves Batverse fans here and my imagination goes crazy with that, with what that could have done. But the news of Arkham still being a thing, but for the DCU Batman, um, and also I think it is a major W, like a huge win, that we're also learning that not only, well, we're not learning this, but not only is the Batman universe obviously carrying on with part two and then eventually eventually part three, the Penguin Show, but we will also have Matt Reeves, the GOAT, um, being quite a big producer and being involved in DCU projects. That's something we didn't really know before today. And who knows, it might not even be just limited to Batman. Maybe uh, it would be pretty cool to see what Matt Reeves in the producing capacity can offer with other characters in the DCU. That, that's something we've still got a lot more to learn about as the years unfold. But this is where we are now. So all that's left is for you guys to give me your takes on this down in the comments below. I know it was another long rambly one, but I wanted to be very detailed because one thing I do see is that people sometimes only digest certain parts of the information along the timeline. And then they start saying like, oh, this person's lied. What's going on here? Oh, no, they're destroying the Batverse, but just subtly over a period of time. Like, no, 
I wanted to make sure everyone had everything and then offer my own boba rambly take at the end. So by all means, ramble away down in that comment section. If you made it this far in the video, would really appreciate a like and consider subscribing for any and all little to large updates on this channel. There's going to be more ramblings coming from me with other things that James Gunn has said, but that will be in a whole separate video. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you fellow Bat family in the next video. Goodbye.